Ooh, scary. That's not a good look. Let's try another angle. Hi everyone, welcome to Rachel's studio. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to share five things that my latest painting, Estella, taught me. Let me introduce you to the first two tries. So here's Estella number one. She looks very dirty, but that baby taught me so much. And here's my other try. This one is even worse. Yay. So that's try number two. I mean, that doesn't even look like Estella at all. So you can imagine that after painting those two paintings, I really started wondering, have I taken on too much? And the answer was yes. And babies are the hardest portraits to paint. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the things that I learned from painting this wrong, from studying and retrying and retrying and retrying, and the five main things that I learned to turn this commission into a success. So let's go ahead and get started. There is also an underlying key to success to all five of the techniques and lessons I've learned. And I'll share that at the very end, so stay tuned. My first key to my final success was paper. If you've been following me on my Patreon over the years, you well know my love-hate relationship with Arsh Cold Press watercolor paper. The company was bought out by a larger company years ago, and I don't think Arsh has ever been the same. Here you see me painting my first attempt, and it's really hard to see on camera. There was something off about the sizing. Side note, I had also had started another big commission on Arch around the same time, and the sizing on that one is even worse. Be sure to check out my video, by the way, about bad sizing, and just know when you click on it, it will queue it up for you to watch next, after this video is finished, so it won't take you out of this video. So anyway, I happened to have another paper at the ready that I decided to try, and it solved about 80% of my problems. I'm not even kidding. I used Hannah Mule The Collection, and I knew after the first few strokes that this time was going to be a lot better. It just blended more beautifully. It almost blends itself, and the paint sits on it in a beautiful way. It's hard to describe. It just looked beautiful from the get-go. So the next technique that I used on the final painting was to build up the values and colors in the skin with many, many layers of tissue thin layers of glazes. If you don't know what I mean by glazes in watercolor, it's comparable to making complex colors with layers of saran wrap, which is very thin and transparent, just like layers of watercolor glazes are. All the layers underneath shine through, so they all affect each other. So using glazes makes it possible to, to delicately build up both values, which is lights and darks, by the way, and also complex color, which is key to success to painting delicate baby skin. I will forever be grateful to Paint Coach, by the way, for his video about painting babies. And the underlying secret to success with them is to have smooth value transitions and very, very few hard edges in the face. The plane of a baby's face is flatter than an adult, so they don't have the higher contrast shadows that deeper eye sockets and say a more pronounced nose would create. And of course, their skin is very smooth with gradual transition in both values and colors. So what this means as an artist is you need very delicate transition between colors and gradations from light to dark so your baby doesn't look like an old person. And the best way to get these smooth gradations is to work in many, many layers of thin glazes to slowly build up the features of the baby's face. So the basic technique is to paint a large glaze, let it dry, then you paint a subsequent a little bit smaller glaze, you let that dry, and so on and so on until you have the values and colors the way you want them. And of course, to adjust colors, you just make the next glaze close to the color you're wanting to capture. For example, if your skin color is starting to look too red, paint a glaze of yellow over it. This is a good place to tie into my third bit of advice, by the way, for painting a baby, and that is, towards the end of the painting process, don't paint over your baby with a heavy or too saturated non-orange color because it may make your skin look muddy or dirty. So that's what I did. <laughs> I painted over Estella with a glaze of Windsor Violet, very thin watery glaze, but it was pure Windsor Violet. I was trying to cool the shadows down and when it dried, she looked dirty. I should have mixed in orange and then just added a little purple or a blue but not just the pure blue or purple by itself. So for cooler skin areas, mix an orange and add a little blue, but don't go over the whole area with a pure blue or purple glaze. Sometimes I've seen this done and it works, but I'm just telling you what I feel put the final nail in the coffin for my first attempt 
and it's that glaze of violet. The biggest lesson I learned from painting Estella a few times is that to get those cooler shadow areas in the skin, like in the left side of her face, our left, her right, the trick is to mix a little cool color in, but the color is still mostly orange. It's just a cooler orange. So the mix is like 40% red, 40% yellow, and maybe 20% blue or purple, for example. I like Holbein Oriolan, M. Graham Naphthol Red, Windsor Violet to cool the skin tones, and maybe a little Burnt Sienna, maybe for the darker shadows, but the jury is still out on that. Burnt Sienna is considered an earth color, and it's opaque, and it's heavy, and it easily turns mixes into mud. So just know that you really have to be careful with Burnt Sienna. I have seen a lot of good artists use burnt sienna in skin, but I just feel like if you're going for a transparent looking glowing skin, burnt sienna can get muddy so fast. I've also seen artists use green in cool shadow areas. Honestly, that scares me, but I do want to explore that more. And also that reminds me of a quote I recently saw from De La Croix. And De La Croix said that his secret to painting glowing skin tones was to pair it with mud. And here's the quote exactly. I can paint you the skin of Venus with mud, provided you let me surround it as I will. And that makes sense. To make colors pop, you pair bright colors with grayed down ones. So why not do the same thing to paint amazing skin tones? I don't know, but I will be playing with these ideas a lot in the coming months. I found some more interesting art advice as I was doing a bit of research for how to paint my third try. And this bit of advice was from the amazing Leoba Bruckner. I'm probably not saying her name right. She has a wonderful YouTube channel. Her advice was to paint shapes, not necessarily parts of the face. To conceptualize what you're painting, think in terms of painting shapes of similar color and value instead of a nose or an eye. I think this was especially helpful when painting the nose because it helped me not make the nose too complex or overpainted. And putting too many details in the nose can make it look stiff, overworked, and not organic. This is a similar idea to painting with shadow shapes, which I made a video about a while ago, and I'll link that here. But let's look at the shapes in the face and the nose that you could paint. Here's me painting her nose, and I feel like it got a little heavy, and I ended up going a against Leova's advice, which is don't give in to the temptation to blend and adjust. But I did, and I think it helped, but I wanna play with this idea more. In my quest to find answers to imp improve my Estella painting, I came across the amazing Yang Chen and his YouTube channel. He paints a lot of portraits and you can watch sped up footage of his entire painting process. And it's quite exciting to watch him paint because at first he paints much larger areas and he makes an absolute mess. And it scares you <laughs> when you watch it. And then as he gets further into the painting process, he starts refining by cleaning up those messes, mostly by lifting out highlights and blending rough areas. First use the one inch flat brush to do some lifting and then go to the I often do paint this way already, but it was a good reminder for me that I could rely on those techniques to continue to rework and refine areas, especially the eyes and mouth until I was happy with them. And I did make a short about how I reworked the eyes so much, so you can watch one of my shorts about that. But I will say that in order to work this way, you must use good paper that takes a lot of reworking, such as Hannah Mule The Collection. If you get some good Arsh Cold Press, that's a great paper for reworking. You just have to find good paper that's uh, got good sizing, so try to buy from genuine art dealers like dickflick.com. Join my Patreon to learn so many more things from this one tutorial. A new to me white pen I love that I use to put in the eye glints, full real-time footage of the final painting with full voiceover, how to choose background colors that will make your baby's skin glow even more, see my palette and reference photo as I paint, how I use the Rembrandt windmill principle to design this whole piece, and much more. So the final thing that I wanna share with you, the underlying lesson beneath all these other new techniques and fresh ideas is to be a successful artist, it's not your materials, techniques, or fancy effects you use so much as your ability to problem solve. Was it Einstein who said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And every single technique that I shared with you today is a result of me doing something a little differently and tying it all together in that final painting to make it finally work out successfully. 
That applies to artists too. If what you're doing isn't giving you the results you want, try a different thing. But not just any random thing. See that you have a problem and look for answers. Most of the time, the easiest way is from someone who has already figured your problem out. Look for artists who are painting the way you want to and learn from them. We live in the golden age of information. There are so many amazing watercolor instructors. I myself watched several hours of YouTube tutorials to learn new ways to paint babies and skin tones for this commission. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Study, read, watch YouTube videos, join my Patreon, then try again with your new knowledge. Try a new paper, a new mix, an, or a new technique, but be persistent. Try different things and think through your problems because after all, painting is just a series of encountering problems and solving them. Be sure to check out the many shorts I've done on this baby also. I'm gonna be doing a series on how I painted her clothes in this form of shorts. I've already uploaded a shorts about the soft background and the eyes, so there is a lot of free content about this particular painting already up. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. Go check out my Facebook group and please upload your paintings there. I love to see your paintings. My community also loves to be supportive by cheering you on or giving you suggestions if and when you ask for suggestions. We like to do that too. I'd love to see you on Patreon. And until then, go watercolor your world and I'll see you next time. Bye everybody.